Hi guys, thank you very much for clicking on the video. If you do like uh, the content that you see, please uh, like, share, subscribe, hit that notification button if you do want to see more. Uh, previously on my channel, I've got a video showing you how I painted up a bunch of Sisters of Battle. They need transport, they need tank support. So I've got a couple of emulators, which I have kind of butchered a little bit. I didn't like the uh, section that goes on the back of these particular models. Um, so I've removed it. <laughs> That's, and I've also, which might many might see as sacrilegious, I don't like the uh, ornate glassware, so that's gone as well. Um, we're going to be painting these up as a scheme similar to um, the Order of the Bloody Rose, which is a nice red. I'm going to be doing something very similar to what I did with my original sisters, which is going to be that sort of like candy slash pinkish like metallic red that I did. Works, works quite well on a lot of plastics. Um, this is gonna be our basing color for some highlight, well, for some, some highlighting for some Xenophil application. This is Mystic White from Green Stuff World. This is one of the first colors that we are gonna be putting on to the model. This is an airbrush tutorial, so apologies. If you are using a paintbrush, it doesn't really work that well, um, what I'm actually doing with paintbrushes, I'm afraid. I have removed all of the, um, I've not glued any of the, weapons on because they fit straight in if I'm completely honest but if we crack on if I uh, just get this on we're going to put in some Xenophil highlights um, just making sure that quite a bit of the sections are painted that I want to be painted I'm going to try and keep the scheme quite dark on this one and then we're going to be moving on to the next color which is going to be ruby red candy ink from green stuff world that works well with this mystic red it gives it a very nice looking red I've gone over many elements of the tank twice. I've got my nice little pattern that I'm actually after. I'm gonna take off the nozzle on my uh, airbrush and I'm gonna focus on particular spots. So like maybe like the, the top of that, maybe two bottom bits. And I'm gonna kind of like put little, little concentrations of the, uh, the metallic silver. Uh, ready for when I put the so I'm wanting like little maybe spot highlights or little bits that pop up when that red goes on. Okay, now we've got my little spots picked out. I've got my metallic silver down, and we're gonna shake up the ruby red from Green Stuff World. I've put some water in my wet palette, but I've not put any other color. I'm just gonna let because it is an ink. I'm gonna let it do its thing. Uh, just make sure you don't close up your brush in the meantime. Now, so thankfully I'm doing two. Uh, I've done several layers here of the red. Um, it does look a bit different under these camera lights. Um, it's got quite a nice metallic -y sort of like, well, like a crimson red coming through, which is quite nice. Um, it's done it quite well. And thankfully a lot of the paint schemes that we need to do when it comes to tanks, you don't need to do a lot of rework. I mean, I'm not, I've not got the, the backs on these because I didn't like the backs. As you can tell, I didn't even like the uh, 
I didn't even like the stained glass on these particular vehicles. I'm trying to make them look a bit more old school. Um, but what we do need to do is to make sure that everything is put correct for the next stage. So this is going to be brushwork. We're not going to be able to use an airbrush on this. Um, so what we're going to do next is to get out some silver. We're going to get all the pipe work for these done up in silver. We're going to get out the black. The black is going to be for the weapon housings on here and also of course the weapons on here. And we're going to do the trim. So anything that's like a metallic sort of like trim um, and the housing for these is going to be done up in black. And we're going to get some grace here because we are going to do a little bit of the old contrasting because of course it, white always looks better in contrast. I might even put some black over these bits here. Um, and of course I'm going to black on those guys. And then with the contrast paint we're going to come in and we're going to um, kind of do the back on here in contrast so we can get that wood done quickly. And anything that's going to be white, so these, I think it's called a fleur de lis, um, all those are going to be painted up in the contrast so that we can, of course, get the white on there. Apologies for the, I can't seem to get the lighting correct on this at all in this position. Um, so we're going to get those done up with the black, with the white, with the silver, leave the tracks alone. We are going to do something special with them. I am going to have a little bit of weathered look uh, to the vehicle's tracks and it's a nice easy way to get your tracks painted. So, let's crack on. Just something to note when you have done the silver, uh, once it's dried I'm going to be putting a known oil over the top of it, including the uh, little sections. So even these little bits here and bits here that I've done with silver, I'm still going to put the known oil over the top. So we've got our sister tank all silvered up and we've put the null oil everywhere. We now just need to highlight it. Now I've gone ahead and dry brushed Stormhorse silver into the pipes. The rest of it, these nice little, I don't really know what to call them, but uh, decorative ornament style pieces. Um, and maybe I've actually dry brushed the chair as well. But they're gonna be applied. So I'm gonna basically just do a little bit of edge highlighting or just applying the, um, just applying the Stormhorse silver where needed. Um, so basically, yep, yeah, that's what you need to do next. Um, I actually do think I do need to do some dry brushing on those. But yeah, get cracking, get dry brushed and come in for the next stage. So once, um, once the <laughs> silver's been done, dry brushed, and we've got it on there, I'm now gonna be using, I've got another scale also, but I'm gonna be using Abaddon Black. And we're just basically putting that, as you can see, into the cockpit area onto, we're just tidying up what we need to tidy up. Uh, with the Amazon black now I am doing the whole of the rims in black as well so as you can see we've got this bit that's going to have a black rim that's having a black rim and that's having a black rim bolter I'm not doing any of that because I'm liking I like the idea but it's quite red um, so I'm trying to stick with that particular colour to be honest with you because I think it'll shine through especially once I've done some dusting of um, once you've done some yeah weathering um, so just the rims at the back, I did notice that on this one because I'm using two. I've got to paint in silver, so I'm gonna have to go back in and do that. But just you're gonna have to put two coats on, as you can see, it's not the greatest. Um, so once you've got two coats on, I've got to finish painting this up. Once you've got two coats, and I am thinning my paint down with um, airbrush thinner because I'm finding the Abaddon Black works better uh, and gives me more control, um, especially with it being a more glossy base that is actually going on to. Um, so if you can do that, brilliant. If you can't, you can still use water, it just might take three coats to be able to do it. So next step on our journey of black paint, it's going to be some dry brushing. So basically a medium dry brush and I've got some dark reaper. Just going to go across the most prominent black sections. I'm going to try and catch the edges with this dry brush. Give us a, a nice 
sort of subtle edge. And then, so next up, I'm going to do some administrator grey. I'm going to dry brush this on. But we're just going to do it in one direction. So, for example, with that, I'm just doing it like so. On the top, I'll just, I just want to try and catch it. Again, just one direction. Well, top of it too, but then what I'm trying to do is just to catch some of what we've already gone over, but not at all, so it kind of blends. Without having to have to use his airbrushes. Cracking. Then I'm going to do the rest of the models for that. So now we're going to be using some grace here. And we're going to be doing the sort of cloak on the inside of here. Um, I'm going to be doing all the fleur de lis. Hmm, them. Uh, there we're going to be doing white. And I'm going to be doing this wood as well with this particular colour, making sure to avoid the silver as best I can, especially on that area. Mainly on the tank, we've got this and these guys. Um, so pretty much do all of that uh, with this particular colour. And then, yeah, just make sure to get any that you, you miss out. And do the lights, but we're going to be doing that special later on with an airbrush anyway. So get your grace here. Got my wet palette, my homemade one. I have got one coming. I've actually got one from Green Stuff World, so excited about that. Make sure it's nice and runny. And give yourself two thin coats on all the required areas. Some might require more. So now we've got quite a lot of the areas prepped, we are going to start with some contrast paint. This is mainly so we can get things painted quickly. Um, as you can see, this one's ready, this one's ready. Um, we're going to start with Griff Charger Grey. We're going to put that into these here we're not going to smother it smother it because we want it to be a lightish grey so try and as if you're using a wash so now we'll wait for Griff Charger to dry let's get some profit carry white handy Like I did. And we are going to paint this giant fleur de lis, I think that's what you call it. Just being careful not to get in anything else. But if you do, try and get it off as quick as you can. Oh. That. Make sure these little things next to the bolters are done. This here. Is there anything on the back? Yeah, there is something on the back. And I'll come back to that in a second. And then this lady here. Make sure to get the skirts. Of the robes. Oh, that's what I wanted to do. I 
and the little symbols at the side. Once you've done all that, let it dry. Well, while it's drying, you can actually be doing the back of this chair. Now, as I am known to do, unfortunately, I have skipped ahead. We've got some seraphine sepia and we've put that on the banners, the sides, and we've got some wildwood. And wildwood is now at the back of the uh, sort of chair, as it were. And what I kind of need to do next is do more of the white. So we need to reinforce this white and bring this white out. So I need some of my whites. So we're going to get some white scar and find a bit of space on our wet palette. Scars are a fantastic colour, always a little bit weird. Make sure it's thin down nice and thin. And we're going to build up layers. We're going to build up layers of white. So, hopefully I can do this with the camera in front of me. If it's strong, make sure yours is a uh, than that. Yeah. We're going to layer it up. We're not going to... Can you see how it's drying back to a, a grey state now? I want to see in the direction if you can. And then go over it again but mainly more towards the middle of the edges we should get a nice flowing white and then best thing to do to go across to the other side of the tank. Oh, as you know, I've got more than one. Of course, you've got all these to do as well, so go across to the other side of the vehicle, build this up, do it again, and wait for it to dry. Once it's dry, have a look, see if you want to keep going. If you want to keep going, Crack on, until you've got the perfect white that you're wanting. So, basic white achieved. Uh, I'm not quite sure if you can see it all on the board lights, but uh, looking quite nice. And then we've got the greys there all done effectively because I just wanted something nice, quick and simple for those things in there. I'm not particularly, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I'm not particularly bothered about the, uh, the whole model, if I'm quite honest. Uh, but I've got these things to do, and we've got some tracks to sort out. So I might do some old school technique and tracks. We've even got some gold to add and all sorts of other little ditties, to be honest. I might have to get the airbrush out in a second. Right, so let's get some pre-shading done on some areas. Okay, so I've changed it over to Wildwood. Right, 
get the rest of it done. All right, so we're gonna be doing a little bit of spot kind of pre-shade. Um, I've got my little makeshift shield ready <laughs> um, for some of the more trickier parts. And what we're gonna do as well, on the stained glass, because of course we painted the stained glass, um, we are going to find something to can shield it properly. We're just gonna put sort of like little dots down here. Now I am using the Leho Game uh, White. To me, it's one of the best whites in the business uh, for airbrushes. So I'm just double checking, there we go, we're good. And we're just gonna Doing that in the center because I'm hoping to use some inks on this. There we are. Of course, we'll do it on the return side. This one is a little bit more tricky. painting those up we should be able to get a nice little effect just by using some pre-shade now I am going to clean the end of the brush when I find my toothbrush it's not good I cannot find my toothbrush oh, there it is and then I'm going to do a bit of pre-highlight on these flames but make sure we're not going to get anything on anything else just gonna make sure that is in the way and I'm just gonna go on the top pieces again I'm gonna keep the lid off Sides. Ow. Bit easier from this side. And that way. Let's crack on, get those pre shades done, and then we should be able to start with some flames. Next up, as you can see, if possible, we'll start with some flash gates yellow, and we are effectively just going to try. Oh boy, I'm starting to get a bit of a blockage because I've already done my other tank. As you can see here, we're going to start with the flames. So we're going to paint these up yellow as best we possibly can, I'm trying to make sure that we're using bits of paper and other shielding techniques. Just try and But thankfully I'd already got one tank done. And what you need next is some fire dragon orange and I'll show you what to do with that in a moment. So, I've got the airbrushed on. I'm gonna mask it off again. What I'm gonna do this time is just try and catch, go like that. With some fire bright orange and we're just going to try and catch the top. Get under in there. Just 
So it's the both sides, or all sides. And then, that one, we're gonna do the same with some Evil Sun Scarlet. Now we're on to the Evil Sun Scarlet phase, as you can see. Got some nice glow on them already. Uh, what we're gonna do, I'm not gonna really mark off this time, I'm just kinda, gonna hold it to a certain angle and just try and catch the tops. Oh. Basically like that. So hi guys. Yes, I know, uh, different camera angle. And effectively I apologize for the echo because we are now in a different room. Um, I have finally moved house. So it has been a few weeks since I recorded the last section to this section. Um, but we have got um, silver put on, of course, on the actual flames themselves, on all the guards. I've just done a little bit of highlighting. And what I've done is to use some uh, Velopus pink, Nasdrag yellow, Orc flesh, and Talisar, yep, Talisar blue, just on the little bits of um, sort of like a fake pain glass that we've got. We're going to be going over that with gold, but what we're going to now look at doing is to get the tracks sorted. So, what we need is some Typhus corrosion, and we are going to do a little trick that I Learned from a different person. Let's get some type of scrolling. This is a really quick way of doing tracks. And then just liberally put it on your, your tracks. And this will give you a nice effect of, of weathering and then effectively you just kind of dry brush some silver on them at a later date. So hopefully you can see that the uh, tracks I have done in the Typhus Corrosion, we're just going to have to wait for that to dry. While we're waiting for that to dry, we stuck on some heads. Uh, these are leftover heads from a previous painting video actually, um, so if you want to go and check that out please do. And Basically these heads uh, have already been done, and uh, just check that out so you can actually how to paint them. We're going to try and get on with that track building. So, as you can see I've got some heads on. We've got the little bit of stained glass added uh, with the uh, different little colours that we used. And I've now put all of the roughness of the track on. So, for now we're going to do a little bit of silver dry brush. Now, the Silver that I'm going to be using once I find it is Necron Compound. And all I'm going to be doing is giving that just a light dry brush across the dirty tracks. We are going to be using some other techniques later on uh, for sort of like weathering patterns. Which will just be really easy to do. Apologies, I am I'm drinking too much Coca-Cola if I'm completely honest. But once I've got my Necron Compound on there, it'll look a treat. So one of the next Oh, possibly one of the final items before we get onto some more airbrushing is going to be some gold. Now, I am mainly, because I'm wanting to try and keep the red as best as I possibly can, I'm mainly just going to be painting these little symbols here with gold. And once these are dry, we're just going to put some Agrax Earthshade Gloss over them and dry brush them with a little bit of silver. Uh, so any of these that you actually think, I mean if you want to do more pieces gold you can do. I am going to do all the trim in the uh, stained glass gold as well. That's going to take a little bit more time. It's going to be, I'm going to have to be a little bit more delicate. So, so take your time, get all those little gold pieces sorted. Make sure you don't miss any. And then we'll be straight back into it. So next up, I'm actually waiting for the Agrax Earthshade Gloss to dry. Uh, so what we're going to do is use some Steel Legion Drab, followed by 
bark side for the airbrush. I'm going to take the top off because I don't need that at this moment. And we are just going to put a bit of uh, so. Sort of Patterning going around the base of the vehicle now gives it a bit of dust, and then we'll just darken that off by just trying to catch the edges with the rhinoxide. So we've done that little bit of weathering at the bottom, not loads because I don't want to diminish from the metallic of the tank. I'm just going to smash my elbow on stuff, and now we are going to put some flash gets yellow finned into my airbrush. I'm just going to put little bits just on here, just feathering it up. I've already painted these with grey sear ages ago, so we're just going to try and give it some lights now. So, I would normally consider these to be done. Um, I'm going to get them varnished. Some transfers on. Um, I'll stick a video link to any particular transfer videos if you guys want to watch. I've done some before so I'm just not going to go over it again in this video. And um, once that's completed, yeah I would say that these bad boys are done. And there we have it. Two presses, is that the presses? Emulators, emulators, sorry emulators. The presses with the phone, oh, well, do apologise. Two emulators, I've got the various different weapons uh, separate, as you can see. Um, we've got molotovs, we've got flamers, we've got uh, heavy bolters. I've just put the heavy bolters on the flamers on just so you can have a look at the moment. And the multi melters so. Uh, but that's it. Two kind of converted emulators and uh, getting rid of the glass panelling at the front making my own form of stained glass actually it's come out pretty well that stained glass to be honest and then just making sure that that big bit at the back uh, is off if i could i would have got rid of these because i don't i don't like the flame um i don't really don't like the flame things that are coming out from the side mainly because when you try and turn that turret you're just knocking it and i've had to gloss varnish these because of course they're the most they have contact points that they're going to be touching the most if they're in a case or something of that nature which means they're just going to rub off but thanks very much for watching guys i uh, hope that helps with you uh, doing your own um order of the bloody rose vehicles i might do like a white rhino maybe for like a command vehicle that would be pretty cool um, but thanks very much for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, hit that notification button if you do want to see more. If you want to keep up to date with all the latest going ons and any news articles, if you just head over to uh, rootstem.co.uk, that's my official website. I also post uh, nearly all the videos go up there as well. Maybe just even a tiny fraction before they go up on Facebook. No subscription or anything, it's just a website. You can just visit it whenever you need to. I will have a members section soon, but it takes time to build these things. Well, thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time.